Son of Sothas. As Joel steps out from the grey house into the clean, fresh morning air, in the Palais Royal quarter, the innkeeper Bonleron is taking down the shutters and opening his door. As Joel's steady steps go marching through the deserted morning streets to the Rue Tournelle to deliver the message for Francois Daubigny, the steady march of soldiers' feet comes echoing towards the Moorish trumpeter, and the good Bonleron, as he finishes with his shutters, looks up to find himself facing an officer and half a dozen archers of the guard. Why, me sword, they get soldiers up as early as innkeepers these days. Archers of the guard, no less. Swinging down the road as if they owned all Paris. And coming right this way, unless I'm mistaken. Was the time I'd have welcomed soldiers to the trumpeter any morning, rain or shine. These men march with too purposeful a step to bode any good. Escort! Halt! Who remain at the door? The remainder with me. You there, tearing like a heathen. Are you the landlord of this inn? At your service. Landlord, we come in the king's name. You have a guest, freshly arrived from the country? Oh, better than that, I have two. We mean the one who has just come from Saint Germain. Do, do you tell me, Captain, one has gone to Saint Germain? Oh, good, good, good. The travel shakes a young man uh, when it does not knock him out of shape. We know he went from here. The postmaster has sworn to seeing him leave on a fine horse. And the innkeeper at Peck Valls, he left it there. He left his horse there? Well, that proves at least he is an honest young man. Friend, you are merry, but I am in no mood. Where is the lodger now? Well, how do I know? He's not here, that's certain. But he forgot to come home last night. Are you sure? Oh, would I deceive a captain of the king's guard? You are rogue enough for anything. In that, you do not deceive me. I warrant the bird is still in his nest, and you do but talk for time. The police agent set to watch last night reported a light in his bedroom. I tell you it. Oh, well, if he's there, you'd, um, you'd better go and take him. Indeed, I will. Brissett, Javis, upstairs with you and bring me down the rogue who hides so coyly in his room. After him, men. If I may make so bold, Captain, what is it you want with this young man? If I'm not misinformed, it's still no crime to visit Saint Germain and to leave a horse at the inn there. I simply obey orders. Oh, I see. You're but an underling and not informed of these matters. Friend, you should know an officer does not query orders. But I will tell you this. He is a desperate character. Yes, he, he certainly sounds it. Some say that he's a murderer and some a thief. But Monsieur de la Reine himself gave orders for his arrest. As it is, he's sure to be of great importance. I think that he is a poisoner. Uh, unhand me, Rome. Do I look so unchivalrous as to refuse my presence when the king requested? Stop pushing, you useless hulk. I'm coming, I'm coming. And without your assistance, you great mountain of flesh, stand back and let a gentleman walk for dignity. Upon my soul, he is no bigger than a child. I had expected, well, certainly not this little fellow. Literal, literal indeed, you impertinent fellow. What was my Lord Lieutenant thinking of to insult the cavalier of my rank and quality with such poor protection as this rebel? Literal indeed. Bon Daron, my dear friend, at his majesty's request, it seems, I leave your friendly roof. Come now, enough of this. Patience, my overgrown peasant. Allow a gentleman to make his farewells in a sitting manner. You are but wasting time. I have plenty to waste. Farewell, my good Bonleron. I will return anon. Come, my pretty watchdog. Do not keep a cavalier waiting. March me along, boys. And mind, I do not escape. For I am a dangerous character, as my enemies well know. And for all my size, could beat the lot of you into the cobblestones, if I'd a mind to. Escort! March! Thank <laughs> you.
along the street, and when it drew closer, I saw it was Friquet the dwarf marched off as a prisoner with a guard of archers. Some said it was for sacrilege, others forgery. Tell me, what has happened? Oh, why have you come back, monsieur? Hide yourself, I beg of you, and let no one know that you're here. Hide? But why? Oh, don't stand there gaping. You're big enough to be seen at three miles distance. Don't you understand, monsieur? Hide yourself. Your life is in danger. What are you talking about? And what has this to do with Riquet? Monsieur, he was arrested in your stead. The police are fools. They had to arrest somebody, and it seems they cannot even tell the difference between a giant and a dwarf. But undoubtedly somebody at headquarters will be wiser, and they'll come back. At the moment, you've been given a reprieve. Well, they've taken Riquet to charge him with whatever you did at Saint-Germain. I dueled with that rogue, the Braggy, and I ran him through. You dueled? Oh, monsieur, and the musketeer? You killed the musketeer? Uh, monsieur Joel, will you please come inside? Do you not see? You've broken the law. Where will they take him? To Châtelet Prison. But you're a fool to stand about talking when Providence has given you time to get away. If you're found, you'll be executed without doubt. Dueling is bad enough, but the musketeer... Point me out the way to Châtelet. I, I, I've been pointing out your doom. Take heed, I beg I you. must take heed for little Friquet. But he is a Parisian, and the Parisian always comes out of escape with glory, even with vain glory. Oh, as your friend, I tell you, make straight for the saint gate and take yourself to Brittany, monsieur, while there is yet time. You, you cannot be serious. I must go to Châtelet. Are you attached to nothing that you throw your life away? Oh, that such a one as you should moulder in a jail. Is there no one whom you love? No one to whom you owe a little? It is cruel to place a man between love and duty. And yet there is no choice. Which way to Châtelet, Bonnoir? I will not tell you. Then I must ask another. I will not let you go, monsieur. I stand between you and the door. You shall not go. Mine host, you are an honest man, and you must forgive my laying hands upon you, but it seems it... there is no other way. Out of my way. You, 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 you go to your death, you fool. I go to Châtelet. Farewell, my friend. Châtelet, grim, grave prison, headquarters of Monsieur de la Reine, lieutenant of police, who looks up gravely from his desk as an officer of the guard enters, followed by the strutting, swaggering dwarf, Frique. Ah, Saint-Jean, they tell me you've caught the rogue at last. Well, what, what in the name of goodness have you brought me here? My lord, it is the person you ordered me to apprehend. Are you mad? You cannot have consulted the description given by witnesses. This here, height over six feet, aspect herculean, dress Breton peasant. Allow me to assure your lordship, I am the person you see. But the description does not fit. Height over six feet. A thing for description. What is an inch or two? You insist you are the man we seek? Without a doubt. Very well. Clark, prepare to take down the statements of this gentleman. Sergeant, place yourselves beside him. He is now in your custody. How now? What new game is this? Statement? Clark? Death of my life, what are you playing at? Accused. Do you acknowledge having maliciously and of a forethought contravened the edict promulgated by our sire, the king? Edict? Is it the sunstroke your lordship suffers from? The edict bearing upon duels by crossing swords in the royal domain of Saint-Germain Forest with Corporal de Brigui of the Royal Musketeers who cannot be pursued by justice from his having unfortunately been killed in the combat. 
So that's what the young Hercules has been up to. Bob on it. Who the deuce is that? Out of my way. And you. Yes, you are 5,000. How do you not stop me? My lord. Oh, you fool, you fool. To what am I indebted for this intrusion? Put it tight. Ethics of the Indian. Hmm. Hmm. My lord, I cannot accept my good friend's sacrifice. It was I who violated the edict. It was I who drew my sword in the precincts of Saint-Germain and slew Corporal de Brady. The king has sent for my head. I bring it him on my shoulders. Joel, Joel, why did you come? You may go, my little sparrow. Here is your man, Saint-Jean, the one you should have arrested, though it might have cost you your lives. In the name of the king, I charge you to surrender your sword. In the king's name, I arrest you. Take him away, Saint Jean. My lord, where are you taking him? What is to become of him? What is to become of him? I have already told you. The penalty for dueling is death. He goes, Monsieur Cox Barrow, to the Bastille. Mm-hmm.